Hey guys, so sunshine. It's it's wonderful, but it's also a carcinogen, right? The more time that you spend in the sun, the higher your risk for skin cancer, including melanoma. And so it's no surprise that all major dermatological cancer organizations, they all recommend a few basic things. Number one, wearing sunscreen. Number two, limiting your exposure to the sun, especially during peak hours between like 10 and 2. Number three, avoiding tanning beds completely. And number four, using other means of protection when you're out in the sun. So hats, clothing, uh, UV protective clothing, sunglasses, and seeking shade when possible. So then what about vitamin D? Well, you can, of course, meet your vitamin D needs from the sun, but it's not that easy. So you need to spend basically the right amount of time in the sun, enough that you produce enough vitamin D, but not so much that you burn or even tan. Too many people still think that getting a little extra color is okay, as long as they don't burn. But anytime skin gets darker, it's getting damaged. And of course, the darker your skin tone, the longer you have to spend out in the sun. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're like super, super pale, even just a few minutes in the sun could burn you. And even for those of us who are closer to the middle or pale, but not so pale that we burn so quickly, so we can get enough vitamin D, you know, without burning or even tanning, even still for many of us, we can't do that for several months of the year. So again, it's easier and it's safer to rely on food and supplements for vitamin D instead of the sun and to be careful when we're out in the sun or even if you're inside in front of a window, right, or in your car um, to use protection. And often that means wearing sunscreen. Unfortunately, all sunscreen is not created equal. Uh, for instance, according to Consumer Reports, many of the sunscreens that they have tested do not actually contain the amount of SPF that they claim to. Missing the mark could mean you're not adequately shielding your skin. An SPF 50 that tests at less than half its labeled SPF delivers an SPF 24 at the most, and sometimes far less. And what makes it worse is that most of us don't apply the recommended amount of sunscreen. So let's say you are putting on half of the recommended amount of a sunscreen that's supposed to be uh, SPF 50, but it's actually only SPF 24. Yeah, you're not getting much protection. And if you're using a mineral-based sunscreen, so you know titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, or both, um, this scenario seems even more likely. In the past six years of sunscreen testing, Consumer Reports hasn't found a mineral product that offers both top-notch UVA and UVB protection. So while a mineral sunscreen provides some protection, if you trust your skin to one of these products, you could be getting more UV damage than you think. And that's a bit of a problem for vegans in particular because the vast majority of the cruelty-free vegan sunscreens are mineral sunscreens. For instance, most of the Consumer Reports recommended sunscreens, um, which of course are all chemical, most of these are not cruelty-free. Um, some are not vegan or might not be vegan. The Walmart Equate Sport 50, whatever. Uh, online, it doesn't say that it contains beeswax, but when I went to the store and picked up an actual bottle and looked on the label, it said it had beeswax in it. So not clear about that one. Um, also, their cruelty-free status could just be unclear, like the Bullfrog brand. I couldn't find any information on whether or not they were cruelty-free. They do have a few, though. So the three recommended that are cruelty-free uh, and vegan are the Trader Joe's Spray SPF 50+, plus, the Equate, uh, again, that's the Walmart kind of house brand, their Ultra Protection Lotion SPF 50. A few caveats, again, the sport one that I mentioned before, when I looked at the bottle in the store, it said beeswax. Um, for this one, I haven't seen in a store, so I'm relying on the online listing, which says it doesn't contain beeswax, so not entirely sure. Always make sure to read the label of whatever you're buying. And then also their cruelty-free status is based on a post from a customer service rep, I guess, on Facebook. And then the final one is the CVS Health Beach Guard Clear Spray SPF 70. And side note, thank you. Thank you so much, CVS, for actually having like a statement on your cruelty-free status. So few of these larger companies do that. And that's great. Thank you. Kroger, if you have a Kroger in your area, they are also cruelty-free. They've said in the past that none of their um, Kroger home or anything else is tested on animals. Um, so apparently it's cruelty free. They're also very cheap, but none of their products have been tested by consumer reports. So, so we have some options, but obviously not a whole lot. And of course, if you don't have a Trader Joe's in your area, that makes your, your options even less.
good sentence. And of course, there's the possibility that what you do have that is cruelty free and vegan, maybe what is available to you doesn't work for you. Maybe you have darker skin and it leaves a white cast, right? Or maybe um, it causes an allergic reaction, which can happen to some people with the chemical based. It's why some people do prefer the mineral based. What do you do? Are you just stuck with whatever cruelty free vegan stuff you can find, even if it's awful and you don't end up wearing it because it, <laughs> because it causes some reaction? Or again, it makes you look bad, like it makes you look ashy or something? I would say no. And this might be controversial, but my point with all of this is that sunscreen is not cosmetic. It's not makeup. You know, unless you never go outside or never spend time in front of a window or you always wear just head to toe protective clothing and hats and sunglasses and everything, sunscreen is essential. It's essentially medicine in that it is preventing disease. And like I argued in this video on medicine, seek to exclude as far as is possible and practicable um, exploitation, you know, cruelty to animals. So as far as is possible and practicable is kind of the most important uh, part there. You know, medicines that uh, contain certain animal ingredients like lactose or are tested on animals, that is a concern. There are things that we all do on a daily basis that do harm sentient beings, but they're things that that otherwise can't be avoided. And I think medications, I think most vegans would agree, fall under this category. So if your only option for a sunscreen that you'll actually use that doesn't make you so greasy that it's uncomfortable or that you can't, you know, wear makeup, which can be very important depending on what your job is, that doesn't cause you to break out, that doesn't cause a rash or whatever, if your only option is something that's not cruelty-free or not even vegan, I personally wouldn't worry about it. I'm someone who takes a, a pill, birth control pill. Those contain dairy. It's, it's not vegan in that sense. But of course I would consider it vegan because it's a necessity for me. I have incredibly painful, incredibly heavy, incredibly irregular periods. If I don't take the pill, I basically have two periods a month. Ha ha ha, it's great. So if I'm not gonna stop taking the pill, who am I to tell you that, oh, you can't use basically one of, if not the most effective cancer prevention tools. Now, of course, if you have a mineral sunscreen that you like, and maybe it hasn't performed very well according to consumer reports, and obviously I'm not showing all of the uh, results here because it is like a paid service, it's it's pretty cheap. You can do it by year or by month. By month, it's $6.95. Um, and I think it's worth it. I used to do it years ago and then I stopped and I just started again. It's really useful if you're buying like especially expensive house stuff like washers and ovens and, and fridges and stuff or smartphones, like it really is useful, I think. I think they do a really good job of reviewing and testing stuff. So yeah, look into it. But my point is if you have a mineral sunscreen or even a chemical sunscreen that you really love and that's cruelty free and vegan, but maybe it didn't test well con with consumer reports or maybe they haven't tested it and maybe you're not sure. It's not that it's not offering any protection. It's just, again, if you are like most people and you're only applying a little bit and you think you're getting the full SPF 50, number one, you're not because you're not <laughs> applying the recommended amount, but also it might not actually contain SPF 50. So just be careful. So as far as what I use, I was using the Kiss My Face, their face stuff, I think it's SPF 30. I like it, it says vegan and cruelty-free right on the front. I really like supporting stuff like that that just makes it very clear and easy to find out that information. Um, I'm seeing a lot more products and a lot more beauty products that are doing that now, a lot more shampoos and stuff. And it's, it's awesome, I really appreciate it. Problem is it's, oh man, it's heavy it's greasy <laughs> and you know putting it on my face even putting like half the recommended amount on my face and then trying to put on like you know a, a silicone primer to kind of help and then it, that's not enough and then i have to put on like a powder and it's just so much stuff on my face to try to make it less greasy and more dry it's it's gross so lately i've been a very bad girl <laughs> I've been a very, very bad girl and I've been using the Hawaiian Tropic, I think it's weightless something. I don't know, they're not cruelty free. They're not, they sell in China. It is much better. <laughs> it's a chemical based sunscreen. It's a lot, lot better than the Kiss My Face. It also smells amazing. It's still not perfect. I still feel slightly, you know, greasy. Not right now, but I mean, after I put it on, it's still like, ah, oh, it's like a tiny bit tacky, you know? 
So what I do, what I have found works well for me is on a normal day when I'm not really going outside, I'm spending all my time like indoors, not in front of a window, um, like total, I'm spending a few minutes outside, right? Like going out to get the mail, stuff like that. On those days, I put about half of the recommended amount on my face and on my hands. And pro tip, even on days when I don't wear a foundation, I always put a primer on over the uh, sunscreen. So I put on the sunscreen, I leave it on for about 10 minutes or so to make sure that it's soaked in. And then I put on a primer, make sure that it's a silicone based primer. The uh, Wet n Wild Photo Focus Matte Primer is good. The NYX Photo Loving, I think, or something primer is also good. And it really, really helps to take away a little bit of that tackiness, that greasy greasiness. And again, when I'm only using the half amount, my skin feels nice, honestly, after I put the primer on. And then on days when I'm going to be outside for several minutes, like if I'm taking baby to the playground or whatever, that's when I put on the full amount. <laughs> and that's, I mean, it's not great, honestly. It's, it's not terrible. It's not as bad as using the kiss my face stuff. Um, but yeah, you're, you're gonna feel a little bit tacky. And I don't know any way around that except for using the La Roche, whatever the brand is, their Anthelios bullshit. <laughs> the name sounds like such bullshit, but their sunscreen, um, which is actually like the top rated sunscreen from Consumer Reports, and I'm not surprised at all. Um, we used this several months ago. We got a couple samples from my pediatrician because we're great parents and we forgot sunscreen. <laughs> and so this is what they gave us. And oh my God, it is incredible. It is like water. It's just putting water on your face. It's like, what? How is this even working? Because it blends in almost immediately. It leaves no film, no greasiness, nothing. It's incredible. It's also incredibly expensive and it's also not cruelty free. Anyway, so when when we run out of the, the stuff that we're using, I'm probably going to buy the Trader Joe's spray. Again, the, the recommended um, Consumer Reports recommended Trader Joe's, all their stuff is cruelty free. Um, the other Trader Joe's does not have a high, <laughs> does not have a high score, which is very interesting. The lotion, only the spray does. And for baby, I'll probably buy the Walmart Equate one. So that's it, guys. Um, again, sunscreen is important, so it's just important that you're wearing it, right? Uh, again, unless you're always wearing the like UV protective clothing and hats and stuff like that, but I don't think most of us are, right? Um, so it is really important. So the most important thing is that you find one that you will actually use regularly. And if that happens to be one that's not cruelty free, not even vegan, maybe it has beeswax, I think that's okay. So I guess that's it. I've been thinking about this for a while, honestly, just kind of reading from other women, from women with darker skin, just talking about how hard it is <laughs> to find a sunscreen. Because I was complaining, like, God, it's so hard to find something that isn't greasy. And then, of course, other people are like, greasy? I'm just concerned about it making me look insane because <laughs> you can see the coloring and it doesn't look right. You know, I look ashy and weird. It's like, oh, crap, yeah, what? That's terrible. So yeah, I've been thinking about it from that perspective and kind of you know, it's kind of shitty to tell people to focus on cruelty-free vegan when those sunscreens just don't work for them, right? And then reading the consumer reports just recently, and like, oh, wow, a lot of these mineral sunscreens maybe aren't the best ones. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. Comments and questions, super cool. Subscribe, super cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan, and I will have a new video very soon.